Hi, I'm Emma. Um, I'm in Madrid in Spain and um, I live in a flat here with my boyfriend in the city centre. Um, Spain introduced lockdown um, conditions in the middle of March and they were announced this weekend that they're extending them until the 26th of April. Um, they banned going outside for any reason other than to go shopping, to go to a supermarket, um, to go to a pharmacy um, or to go to work if you work in an essential job. It's been difficult. Um, there's no allow. You're not allowed out to go to um, to go for any sort of exercise or any walk or walks or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of you're very much trapped inside unless you're going out for one of the specific purposes. You're only allowed out um, solo, so you can't go out with someone else, even if there's someone who's in your household. Um, so when you go to the supermarket only one person can go and they have to carry everything home um, themselves. So that's that's not great. And it means as well, when you go outside, it feels quite isolated because you're not with anyone else. You're not talking to anyone else. Um, and small things like if you kind of go around the, the end of the aisle in the supermarket with someone else um, at, at the same time as someone else and you kind of bump into them, then there's kind of shock and everyone's a bit kind of scared and it's a shame and it's quite sad that people seem to be kind of scared of each other almost now, um, which was never the case previously. Something which is really nice is that at 8 p.m. every day, and it's been the same since since the lockdown was introduced, um, everyone goes out onto their balconies and terraces and things like that and claps and applauds all the, um, the healthcare workers and all the other people who are working to still kind of keep the country going and supermarket workers, all those people, police, people like that. So that's something that's really nice. Um, there's also um, an opera singer um, who lives, I guess, around the corner somewhere. Um, and a couple of times a week, she usually comes out and sings a couple of songs. Um, so that's nice. And particularly now, since the clocks have changed, it's been nice because it's light, so we're actually seeing everyone. In Ghana here, we are experiencing a partial lockdown. Cities like Accra, Tema and Kumasi People are not allowed to linger outside. There is a directive given by the government that all gatherings are suspended. Funerals, churches, mosques, and all social gatherings are closed down. In about eight days, I will be 30 years old. It means that there will be no party. <laughs> and so I'm staying at home with my grandmother my uncle. It's kind of hard for me staying at home as I'm not used to staying at home all day. But it's also a privilege that I can take my time to do my work from home using technologies. Um, my professional team are all confined to home. Economically, uh, the future is very uncertain and I appreciate a lot of people will be feeling uh, very anxious uh, about their incomes, about the bills they need to pay. Fortunately, I'm still on payroll for now, um, but uh, the next few months are going to be very uh, uncertain and potentially we are facing a depression. There have been some pleasant surprises, uh, namely uh, how central London has become so quiet, even peaceful. It's almost like being in the country here. I live under a flight path to Heathrow, um, but I, uh, I really only hear about two planes a day flying over. So the silence is something uh, to adjust to. Uh, and I know that once we're allowed back uh, to work out of our homes, this roar of central London will return. Um, that I'm hoping it will give us time to reflect on um, slowing down of being more environmentally responsible. We have progressively been given more and more rules to follow, as I'm sure you have too. Um, a, Can a big Canadian concern is the uh, proximity to the USA, as we all know it's the epicenter right now, and we share a massive border with the USA. So people are going back and forth still, even though the border is supposedly closed. 
Um, truck drivers are going back and forth with goods and services, but there are also people like emergency personnel that live in Canada that go across the border to work in the USA and in hospitals that are just across the border there, and they go back and forth every day, which is um, a little concerning. We also have foreign workers coming from places much further away that are bringing the COVID virus with them into the country, and uh, they are spreading it around as well. So, uh, but they are considered an essential service. So, the uh, Canadian government is still looking at ways to deal with that because they are required to help in the agriculture industry industry here. Another big concern for Canadians is haircuts, and I'm sure that's probably something that everybody in the world is worried about right now. Personally, um, I need to wear a face mask because I'm eating and drinking too much, and that might help. I'm trying to stay home and keep active. It's it's hard to come up with things to do every day, I must admit. It's a little boring, and I'm doing too much social media, and uh, I'm just worried about how long it's going to last and how to keep occupied. I'd like to volunteer somehow and help people out, but I have volunteered for a group, but I haven't been called to do anything, so that's where I'm at. Um, some of the pleasant surprises that I've found are that I feel a little more relaxed generally. Um, I find people are helpful and cheerful and quite benevolent and trying to find good ways to deal with this. Um, we all are trying to reevaluate what's important in our lives and how we need to live better. Hi, I'm Dan. I live on a boat in London. I've been, in, been here for three weeks. The first week I was uh, in lockdown, but then I was in quarantine uh, because my, I had symptoms that started two weeks ago. I've been uh, I've been in quarantine for 14 days. Uh, the first seven days because I had to. The second seven days because actually I haven't feel that good. So I've been I've been I've been resting a lot. But it is lovely to go outside and uh, see the sun. What I find most distressing is uh, the incompetence of government. Uh, the government decided upon a strategy of lockdown without an exit strategy. Um, what is so marvellous is how hard people are trying to to comply and despite the obvious problems with uh, and the absence of thought having gone into the, what is being required of us and I am struck in particular about how kind my neighbours are and how much support I have received and that how gentle the world is immediately around me. We're classed as a non-essential shop so our shop pretty much overnight had to close. Um, it's been quite hard work for us. We have spent years encouraging people not to shop online especially with certain uh, online retail giants uh, and instead enjoy a personal, of exper personal experience of shopping with us because um, we can sell books through human interaction, conversation. It's a whole sort of personal experience. But now obviously we can't do that. And so there's been a huge rush into getting all our stock onto our website. We really hope that we will come out the other side but we have had to furlough our staff, which means lay off staff, but they get 80% of their pay, hopefully, at some point. Um, it would have made more sense for us to both furlough ourselves and shut the shop completely, but we both made the decision that we would miss our customers too much and we wanted to retain the customers that we had spent so many years sort of build, building up. It's been brilliant seeing people pull together, all the volunteers, little things people have been doing. I know we've set up a little DVD library outside our shop door for free, just little things to keep people happy. We're a family run business, which means half our time spent at the bookshop and half uh, is spent looking after our children. Uh, home learning is not going as well as we thought. <laughs> I've also, where children are concerned, every weekend, we before this, we would drive somewhere and pay to do an experience or go to a museum because every day the kids would say, what are we doing today? And I think now maybe we've learned 
that sometimes it's just enough to do little things and chill out with your family at home. Um, we've been in isolation for about 20 days now. We've been in Hai Chang for about a month and a half. Um, there's only three days until we're finally released. We are almost the last tourist survivors here. We're soldiering on. Um, I mean, to be honest, still not a huge amount of change in the way kind of society functions and flows. And there's a lot less people around, but all the shots are still available, that kind of stuff. Um, but we're, we're hoping that after the 15, 16 days that they had planned to be isolated or locked down for is up, we will be allowed to kind of move freely again. It's just, it's just put a bit of a halt on, on the holiday. We've got and a bit of time out. have the staff been helpful? Yeah, I mean, they've organised if they needed, to, if we need kind of anything like uh, food, they go out to the market and get food. Um, uh, they've given us information, they've given us face masks to use. Hi, I'm Sarah Gardner. Uh, I am Chief Executive of Action Suit Enterprise, a small charity doing brilliant work in a rural community in Upper West Ghana. And I am a single parent uh, at home. Life is uh, quite chaotic and intense as I spend increased uh, time with my two-year-old daughter. But multitasking her uh, and trying to keep working as much as possible has been really challenging. At work, things are um, things. Things have been have been very tough the last few weeks, as we begin to uh, understand the impact that the virus will have on the people that we work with in Laura in Upper West Ghana. Uh, all of our fundraising events have been cancelled, like many other charities. Um, donors are withdrawing funds in cer some circumstances, and. In terms of on the ground in, in Ghana, uh, our, um, the vulnerable people that we work with are already experiencing very difficult and dangerous impacts. Our schools are shut, so we can no longer uh, run our school feeding programme for a thousand children every day. Our inclusion centre, where we support disabled children and their families, is shut. The staff that I work with in Ghana and the UK have all had to really adapt to the anxiety in the organisation. Um, and the kind of high stress around what we do around shutting down work and, and starting the emergency response and also to, to working from home. In Ghana particularly, uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's culturally different to, to be trying to work from a home environment. In, for many of our staff who have difficulty with accessing electricity uh, or supplies that are very intermittent uh, in busy homes with children and animals, um, and with a phone signal um, brilliant all of the time and no Wi-Fi, it's really challenging, but they've done brilliantly. I have to stay home and work from home, which is not so easy because there are so many interruptions from family, from people talking around, children running up and down. It is also difficult for me to see friends as I used to move around and see friends and go by my normal work or normal duties. But the pleasant aspect of this is that I have more time to spend with the family and I also have some time to rest, to have enough rest for myself. Hello, I'm Roberto Pagan from Madrid, Spain, and I have been infected by coronavirus. The first symptoms that I had were, were fever and headache that started around the 7th of March. So I went to the hospital and in 15 minutes they used a machine to see deep my, my lungs. They saw some kind of problems in my lungs, so they decided that I had to stay at the hospital. I was tired, I couldn't uh, almost breathe, I had like a tube and I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, um, but I could realize everything. I had sometimes some kinds of delirious because perhaps of the medication and I felt I spent uh, some days very, very bad because even I couldn't sleep. 
Uh, I saw I could see the doctors running all the time from one place to another. Uh, there was a lot of stress because, of course, in this unit there were the people that had some, the biggest problems. Afterwards, they told me that I could come home, but I should be isolated from my family to prevent them from the illness. I don't really know where I where I uh, took the illness. Actually, I was traveling a lot during the last weeks around Europe, France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy. So perhaps in one of these trips, because many of them, I mean, most people were encouraging this kind of th this thing. Only Ch some Chinese were traveling with this in the, in the planes. But it could be in Spain. I, I, I'm, I'm really not very sure. Until very recently, we considered ourselves very lucky indeed in Tasmania because we had no person-to-person -person transmission of this horrible uh, disease, this virus. But that's changed in the last uh, 24 hours. Um, what happened is that a cruise ship called the Ruby Princess discharged uh, 2,600 passengers in Sydney which is well to the north of me on the mainland of Australia uh, about two weeks ago. And they returned to various places in the world and two people came back to Tasmania with the coronavirus. So um, they went to Burnie, which is also in the north of Tasmania, but it's in the west, not near me. Um, and uh, now this has developed into an epicenter from these two cases which were hospitalised there. We've now had to close both hospitals in Burnie, which is really serious because there are not that many hospitals in Tasmania. These hospitals are going to be deep cleaned over the next few days. And um, it's also resulted in uh, 1,000 pe people being um, put into quarantine. Uh, the staff of the hospitals because so many people contracted, so many staff also contracted this virus. So we're being extra careful since that news. Um, but we're thinking of people in the rest of the world because we know that we're still very well off in Australia. So to you in New York, London, in India, in Africa, take care and go well.